I want to say a special thanks to my daughter, Living Survival Junior, for helping Dad out with this video. She's got an upper expander and a lower expander, so she was laughing at herself off camera when she was pronouncing some of the words. But she did a great job, and today we're going to take a look at 10 tips when setting up your tent. Number one, look above for possible falling objects. That's right, before you set up, look up. Nothing like getting skewered by one of these dead limbs, not to mention bird poop, berries, and nuts tree sap, anything that can fall from a tree, it's better to set up in an open area. Number two, make sure the ground is level and free from sticks and rocks. Make sure to check the ground for rocks and sticks. Make sure to check for rocks and sticks that are not only uncomfortable to sleep on, but could also damage the floor of your tent. Number three, use a ground sheet. Most manufacturers have a ground sheet available or you can just use a tarp. If your ground sheet or tarp is too big, simply tuck it underneath the tent you want the water to come down the sides of the tent, but not pool on the ground sheet. Number four, door placement matters. Freestanding tents like this three-person mother hubba from MSR allow you to position your tent and more importantly, the doors before you stake it down. Often when I'm positioning my tent, I want the sun to rise on the door and set on the back. That seems to keep it coolest at night and warmest in the morning. Other things to consider are where are your privacy walls. If you're at a campground, for example, you may want to face your privacy wall towards your neighbors. And it's also a good idea to put your door upwind. Therefore, the mosquitoes will be on the backside instead of the front side and won't join you when you enter your tent. Number five, don't over tighten or under tighten. When staking out your tent, you want it taut, but be sure not to over tighten it. Number six, keep screens closed. Speaking of mosquitoes and spiders and snakes and ticks and anything else that might crawl in your tent, it's a good idea to always keep those doors closed. Number seven, keep pans off the sides. Touching the walls isn't as big a deal in a double wall tent since you have the intersection and then a fly that goes over that. So you're not gonna transfer the condensation from the outside layer to the inside layer. However, in a single walled tent, such as the teepees I use in winter or less expensive, tents that just simply don't have a fly, you want to avoid either touching those sides with your hand or gear because that condensation will transfer and you'll be wet inside. Number eight, flip inside out to remove sand or dirt. One easy way to get all that dirt and grass and sand out of your tent is simply to flip it inside out. So I just go from one of the doorways, open it all the way, and then I'll just pull the rest of the tent through there. You can see all this grass and sand. Then once it's inside out, just give it a good shake. Go back to that door and pull it right side out again. You have a nice clean tent for next time. Number nine, don't fold it, stuff it. You never want to put your tent away wet. If you do have to put it away wet, make sure you set it up at home and let it dry out before you store it long term. You don't want to cause any mold or mildew issues. I also like to keep my zippers shut on not only the fly but the inner as well. And when I go to put it in the stuff sack, they tell you to fold it, but that can actually hurt your material over time where those creases are. So I like to just stuff it any which way in my stuff sack, nice and quick that way as well. And number 10, set up at home before going camping. The last tip would be to set up your tent at home, maybe even sleep in it at night just to get used to it, get used to setting it up so you know what to expect when you get to the campsite. So the tent featured in today's video was the MSR Mother Hubba, a three-person lightweight tent. The NX series from MSR, which come in a one-man, a two-man, a three-man, and a four-man are certainly high quality. They are their best sellers, and I know why. You've got the high-quality materials, the high-quality ripstop, the high-quality webbing, the high-quality stitching, the high-quality buckles, high-quality stakes, high-quality Easton Cyclone poles. Everywhere around the tent, you just see quality and it works really well. I've had it set up in the rain, the high wind, not a drip has gotten in the tent. So it is definitely something that I'm gonna hang on to and definitely something that I'm gonna get a lot more use out of in the future. I hope these tips today helped you. I hope you guys give this video a big thumbs up for me. Make sure you share it to any friends or family on your social media. If you haven't already done so, please click that red subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified of new video.